Good morning, saints. Um, I wanted to share with you some things I had found in Luke. We know that during the time of Jesus' ministry, he was teaching to Israel the gospel of the kingdom of God, okay, um, or the kingdom of heaven, as he called it. The mystery of the cross had not yet been revealed. However, everything in the Bible is a shadow, a type of Christ, and law versus grace. Um, the problem with the modern gospel, it, it has been taught wrong. The gospel is to be, you believe the gospel. You don't do the gospel. You see, that's, that's why he says it is not of yourselves. Any, there's nothing we do to save ourselves, okay? There's nothing we do. The gospel is not a collaboration with Jesus. It is a resting on Jesus, a trusting on on Jesus. There was a tribe where the ministries, uh, they had a very, uh, 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 an old language, and they had no word for believe. So they were trying to translate John 3, 16, and it's, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So they translated it to their language to whosoever leans on him. And I thought that was wonderful. We need to be saying that believe is not just to acknowledge who he is, uh, but so that Christ is that to you, you see, that you're trusting in him to save you. There's nothing we do. Uh, I'm going to do a video on many verses of repentance because they have um, twisted repentance to add a work to salvation. Uh, I've always said, of course, once we're saved, we, we let the Holy Spirit work in us and he'll let these sins fall off, but we don't focus on sin. That's a problem. They focus on it all the time. And the strength of sin is the law. So I'm going to um, give you some information. In Luke 10, 39, uh, Lazarus' sister, Mary and Martha, okay? And she had a sister, Martha, called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. She's, you know, waiting on the disciples and Jesus and working in the kitchen and came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she come help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. This is a perfect example of how salvation is about taking from Jesus, not serving him. Do you understand? Of course, when he's your Lord, you serve him. But I want to know what these people are submitting. Oh, he's not Lord of all. How is he Lord of anything to them? I, I want to know what that really looks like. Is, are they going, uh, Lord, tell me what do job to take? I mean, what, what is it that they're submitting so much to? Because they read their Bible and their devotional every day, so he's Lord of their life. Uh, because they try to keep the commandments, he's their Lord. By works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By no works of righteousness shall any man be justified. Uh, it is not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. I, I don't understand what's confusing about that. Um, and, and you'll know that the Holy Spirit is in all of us grace, grace uh, teachers, all of us people saved by the real gospel there's only one gospel that saves us the the mystery of the cross which is revealed in first corinthians 15 which is a death life death burial resurrection of jesus christ fulfilling scriptures for the remission of sins that is the truth that saves us and again i keep saying the demons believe in trouble no 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 that's demons believe there's one god the muslims believe there's one god it doesn't save you the truth that saves you is resting in what christ did plus they're not human so i hate it when they use that that whole i've done a video on the book of james okay lordship salvation without james is dead because they always say faith that works is dead you know because they take it out of context so you can watch that if you want to understand that book a little better all right now, um, Jesus says to Israel, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? We are to rest, to take, to receive. You know, the woman at the well was told, If you would have asked, I would have given you living water. Living water is the Holy Spirit coming up, telling us life, giving us life constantly. And that's why the true gospel message is a gift. It's good news. 
You know, when people say the gospel's hard to take or you're preaching a watered-down gospel, I, I've asked them, what, what's the rest of it? Because Paul said, this is the gospel you received, the one I preached, the one wherein you stand, the one that saved you in its entirety. There's no more. The whole book of John is believe, 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 faith, faith. You know, uh, anytime they were mentioned repenting, I, I've gone through it before. It's just a change of mind. We, you change your belief, not your behavior, to be saved. It, it's just the acknowledgement of the truth that sets you free. The truth shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You see, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So we know this is the only gospel. I, I, there, there, there's two things you got to do to be. No, there's nothing you do to be saved. The only thing you do, I guess, because it says this is the works of God. The only work we do is to believe on the one He sent. You know, believe on Him, not just in Him. Don't because Jesus said, many will come in My name saying, I am Christ. Now most people think that means they're going to go down the street and go, I am Christ. But people would just laugh those. They, it wouldn't take them seriously. They wouldn't be deceived by it. Some people are, but, you know, they're a little off anyway. But what they're, what that verse is saying is many will come and say, I'm Christian, and that Jesus is the Christ, and teach damnable heresies to you. They'll tell you you got to do this and do that and make him Lord and da-da-da and put all the burden on you. The burden of sin was on Jesus Christ on the cross. The burden of getting rid of our own sin is not on us. He wore it, Okay. He, he wore our iniquity. He wore our sin so we can wear his righteousness. Okay? Now, these people say, you know, first of all, when a, when, a, when a saved person lives in sin, they have no peace. We know we know him when we keep his commandments, when we love others and love God. Because when we grieve the spirit, we feel distant from God. Okay? That's about fellowship. So, of course... But what the Holy Spirit also convicts you of is righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to use this in an example. If you tell someone, you know what, we found, your, we found out that your dad was actually a prince of like this foreign country. Or your dad was the king of some country, you know, what would that do to you? How, would that change how you carry yourself? You'd all of a sudden stand upright and go, wow, I'm royalty. And so the Holy Spirit convicts us of, you know, it says, whosoever um, says Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now, the people that admit he's Christ doesn't mean that they really believe it because to be the anointed one is to be the Savior and these people are trying to be saved. They haven't uh, acknowledged the truth that he is Savior. And it says that in Hebrews, it says he, he and, and by himself, I'll give you that scripture in another video, but by himself, he did, he saved us and then sat down at the right hand of the Father. By himself. It, and if, you, if it's not all Jesus, you are not saved. The biggest heresy is to repent of your sins to be saved it is not of yourself you get saved but simply believe in jesus has saved you then you uh to them he gave the power to become sons of god then the holy spirit will come in and say and instead of saying you're condemned for doing that sin because the strength of sin is the law that's not how i hear him i always hear him say that's not who you are that you don't do that because that that's not who you are you're a child of the king you're you're royalty you're a princess what why would you do that that that's defiling yourself you see we have to come from that place and so when i take this to an extreme and i think what would they do if they had like they reached they went to a homeless person just down just completely destroyed from addiction or alcoholism and they're living in the street what is this good news they're going to give them? You know, if you stop drinking, Jesus will forgive you. Well, if he could, if he could get rid of his own sin, he, he wouldn't be in the pig pen, you know? So we know that's a false gospel. Let them be accursed. And what's scary is that like 80%, 90% of the churches are teaching this heresy. Uh, the new Bibles add being saved and repenting of sins. It's not the gospel, people. Um, of course, once we're saved, we have to acknowledge who we are. 
and walk in that truth. And that's why when Paul said, if a brother's overtaken by a sin, falls into a habitual sin, bring him back, restore him, strengthen him. We don't condemn. And they always point the finger. Yep, all those greasy, great. See, they mock the cross of the Lord. They spit in his face. It's horrible. That easy believism, they all fall into immorality. It, they're so high and mighty. And, and, they're, and they're, they're just pride, man. And you can show them and show them and show them. And they're just so wrapped up in their self-righteous pride. They don't want it to be true because they don't want those people saved. But God does. So let's get them saved. So if you, if you went to a homeless person, the good news you tell them is, honey, don't you know what the Lord did for you? Don't you know you're a child of the Most High God? And I would go proceed to tell them, believe this truth and he's going to restore you. He's going to take those broken pieces and make a beautiful mosaic out of it. Okay? You don't try to find the broken pieces and put them together. Because yours will look like a kindergarten project. Okay? You let the Lord do it so he can make a masterpiece, a Sistine Chapel. You see? We have to allow him to do that. Not us. Salvation is for them that worketh not. No one can answer that verse for me. They always ignore it and then bring some out-of-context verse to throw at me. Okay, these are things we should do once we're saved. But not to be saved. We have to get it clear. These people don't have the Spirit of God. And, and it's all their behavior modification through self-effort. Well, how could I have cleaned up my life if God went in? Well, atheists do it. Buddhists do it. Uh, AA programs change, have change of behavior. None of that is saves you, nor does it prove you're saved. And I've said we have a problem. They're saved, confused, and lazy. And then they're self-righteous, unsaved hypocrites preaching a false gospel. So we need to come in the middle, be saved, resting in Christ, knowing who we are, and manifesting that truth to the world. We need to be light and salt. And I would agree there is a problem. But we don't fix the problem by preaching an accursed gospel to, to make standards higher to become a Christian. Because they're not Christians. They're not saved. I'm, I'm telling you. That's the reason they rest the scriptures to their own destruction. They don't have the same teacher. We have the same teacher, the Holy Spirit. And we're, we're called, you know, you just want a license to sin. And I don't need a license to sin. Nor do I need a law to make me not sin. Because Christ is in me. Do I fail sometimes? Absolutely I've talked about the depths of sin before and thought, word, and deed, foolish thoughts, fear, worry, all that's sinful. But we don't focus on sin, you see, because the strength of sin is a law. We focus on Jesus. When, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus in the water, he sank. We keep our eyes on him, not us. And that examine yourselves garbage, that is not about us looking inward to make sure we're saved. Are, are we really saved because of how we're living? No. That was to a church. Examine yourselves to be in the faith. Make sure everyone's got the same doctrine. Because in the early church, the Pharisees were bringing in keeping the law. Stop sinning. It's the same thing. Repent of sins. Repent of breaking the law, i.e. keep the law. It's the same thing. None of that saves you. And adding that as a condition of the gospel, the condition of salvation, takes the glory away from Jesus. You know, it says those forgiven much love much. If grace doesn't work, how do you explain me and all the ministers and missionaries that are saved by grace, that give their whole lives? Now, because I'm saved, he loved me while we were yet sinners. He died for us. But because he loved me while I was still a junkie and didn't ask me, you know, I'll forgive you if you stop sinning. He said, I forgive you. You're my daughter. Now act like it. And, and that truth is what transforms the weight off, you know, they put a yoke on people's necks. It's not of God. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. You, you work so hard, you block the kingdom of heaven for others, you put a yoke on their neck that neither us or our fathers could bear, and then you get one convert and you make them twice the son of hell as yourself. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. It's garbage, it's not the gospel. You know, they want to give the bad news. The gospel is not try really hard to stop sinning so Jesus will forgive you. It's you're forgiven. Now go serve the one who saved you. Okay? Um, there's going to be a lot of people in heaven that never lived like a Christian. And we know <clears throat> there's two judgments. 
The beam of seed of Christ is for believers. We will answer for our works. And there will be tears and loss at the beam of seed of Christ. We know that. Okay? We could have maybe ruled. And in, in, he may have given us a leadership area in the kingdom of heaven that we lost because we didn't live for him. So we, we do have consequences for sin. But loss of salvation isn't one of them. Because there is now no more condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. These people are trying to be in Jesus. We are. The gospel, you believe the gospel, you don't do the gospel, okay? So I'm going to do um, a video on biblical repentance, uh, declare to just on that, giving verses about what repenting, changing your mind actually means, okay? Bye, you guys.